From mysterious sightings from just this week to new Pentagon investigations into sightings from the past. These UFO encounters are strange, they are mysterious, and it's time we talk about them. Put on your tinfoil hats and join me today as we count down part two of the top 10 recent UFO sightings we can no longer ignore. All right, time's up. Starting off this list, in our number 10 spot, we have the Russian UFO. Just yesterday, Russia saw some kind of unidentified flying object overhead, and it caused them to need to shut down their airspace over one of their biggest cities. Passenger planes from Polkovo Airport in St. Petersburg were grounded after the reports of a mysterious object started coming out. The military ordered the closure in order to not only investigate, but also to try and keep everybody safe. Right now, the best guess as to what this UFO could have been is likely a drone, with officials saying the object was heading towards the Gulf of Finland. But even if it was just a drone, they have yet to decipher where it came from or what its purpose was. Apparently, Russian officials haven't yet confirmed that there really was a UFO, but they did confirm the closure of the airport. Russian citizens also got quite a fright when they received alerts claiming an air raid was taking place and they were told to seek shelter immediately, but officials later claimed that the alert was quote, fake, and it is suspected to have been a hacking attack. In our number 9 spot today, we have the UFO convoy. This sighting comes from someone on Reddit who swears that they passed a UFO in transport and they even have the videos to prove it. Their post reads, quote, backstory, I was coming from LA and after passing Bakersfield, the freeway started to slow down and traffic started to pile up. Once I got close to the source of the traffic, I decided to record what was going on. I was able to record what looked like a UFO saucer shaped object. However, I did pass by it fairly quickly. Once I passed it, I kept questioning myself, what did I just see? But I decided to brush it off thinking it might be replica for some UFO carnival or alien event. After passing the UFO about five miles out, I decided to take an exit and use the bathroom. After the restroom, break, I got back onto the freeway the exact same time as the convoy with the UFO was passing me while I was entering the freeway. I was not able to make a video of that specific moment. Once I was on the freeway, I saw two vehicles blocking each lane going CA5 north. Both cars seemed to have federal license plates. As well, ahead of them was a convoy of two CHP trucks with their lights on blocking both lanes. Ahead of the two CHP trucks was the big rig hauling the alleged UFO, and in front of it were two more CHP officers. Though I was able to make a video of the convoy as it was exiting the freeway, and when I looked at it under more light, I was amazed to see something so similar to a UFO. Again, I'm not clearly sure what I saw, but with all the circumstances and what was occurring in that moment, it seemed to be a UFO. Also, when shooting the last part of the video, the federal agent in the white pickup truck seemed to speed up and block my view of recording. At first I thought, why would they not cover it up if it was a real UFO of types? But then I thought, maybe. That's the whole plan. Hide it in plain sight. It's very sneaky, all right? In our number eight spot today, we have the advanced technology. So this UFO sighting comes from a while ago, but it just recently became relevant, and that is because some former US Air Force personnel have begun explaining to the Pentagon that they believe back in the 60s, there were UFOs that supposedly had the ability to turn off their nuclear warheads. Apparently, these officers recently told this to the government's all-domain anomaly resolution office, who had contacted former Air Force ICBM launch officer Robert Salas to get information about the encounter with an orange flying disc that switched off 10 warheads at Maelstrom Air Force Base in Montana in 1967. There was another former officer, Dr. Robert Jacobs, who also apparently told the AARO that he had gone as far as to make a film of the UFO for the Air Force in 1964, and that this film captured images of a UFO shooting a test missile out of the sky. With the peaking interest in UFOs and the potential for an advanced civilization apart from our own, it appears as though the government is spending more time now researching and looking into these claims because, well, why would they make them up and continue on with the same story some 50 years later? In our number 7 spot today, we have the Texas 2022 UFO. This UFO video came from Reddit and was posted by the user SolarBoy1. With the video, they posted the statement that came from the girl who had sent them the video. The statement reads, quote, this happened happened at 5.09 a.m. I was not about to go out there when I wasn't even dressed and I was scared. People always think they would have done things differently if it was them, but you never know what you'll do when you are actually having that experience. I always thought I would be doing the most to get a better view and record, but my anxiety was triggered and I could not go back to sleep after that. I was only recording to show my boyfriend who was awake at the time since he works night shift. Pretty much disappeared after I don't know where it went. I honestly felt in that moment that they knew I was watching them when the 
light shined towards me, it was so bright. That's when I got really scared. I have a Tia that's kind of psychic. Like she just always knows things and, and sees stuff. And she called me right after it happened because I sent the video in our family group chat. She said, we are going to start seeing UFOs more often in this new year and that they are going to reveal themselves more. I know I don't know her, but I fully trust this lady's aunt. I feel like she knows something and considering this was before all of the UFO panic in the last few weeks, it seems like she really was onto something. In our number six spot today, we have the Las Vegas UFO. Back in December of 2022, just a couple days before Christmas, residents and visitors in Las Vegas were stunned as they looked up to the sky and saw something none of them had ever seen before. It appears as though an object with big glowing lights on it was hovering in place just above the clouds. Not only this, but the moving lights from the Las Vegas Strip, every time they ran past this object, rather than illuminating it, it seemed as though the object just reflected the light in a very odd way you wouldn't necessarily expect. Of course, Reddit blew up with videos and photos and questions and theories, and there is a leading theory, but I personally am not totally convinced. Basically, they say that this was all due to a really rare phenomena that is almost never seen in Las Vegas, except for somehow that night. Basically, they say that the weird lights and reflection and everything is just a result of ice crystals hanging in the air. Of course, I'm sure there's a more sciencey explanation, but to me, this all just seems a little too convenient. In our number five spot today, we have the Rendlesham Forest incident. This incident is often referred to as Britain's Roswell incident, and it took place in December of 1980. The incident took place in the Rendlesham Forest, which is a pine forest in England that, at the time, sat in between two United States Air Force bases, RAF Bentwaters and RAF Woodbridge. Over several nights around this time of year, a number of credible military personnel reported strange and colorful lights, both above as well as in the forest. Some of those who were sent to investigate the strange lights reported seeing a triangular craft at close range, and there was even a famous audio tape made of the encounter. After these happenings, the UK Ministry of Defense claimed that the incident posed no threat to national security, and because of that, it was never investigated further. What really happened in the forest all of those years ago remains a total mystery, but those who actually witnessed the lights in the aircraft are said to have remained totally baffled. In our number four spot today, we have the New Jersey UFO. This UFO sighting took place in 2001, just above the New Jersey Turnpike. On July 14th, 2001, just after midnight, for around 15 minutes, motorists driving down this highway stopped to stare at the sky to witness what no one could believe. There were strange orange and yellow lights in a V formation just above the Arthur Kill waterway. There were a ton of witnesses who were all extremely confused and shocked as to what they were seeing. Air traffic controllers initially denied that there were any flying objects that could have caused the mysterious lights, but a group that is called the New York Strange Phenomena Investigators claimed that they received radar data that night that would corroborate the story that the witnesses were telling. It may not have been aliens, but it certainly was some sort of unidentified flying object that no one had ever seen before, and there were people from all walks of life witnessing it together. In our number three spot today, we have the Belgium wave. Nearing the end of November of 1989, citizens of Belgium were shocked to report seeing a big triangular UFO hovering in the sky. Aside from these reports from the visual witnesses, however, there wasn't any physical evidence supporting the existence of the UFO. Flash forward to a few months later in March of 1990, and new sightings began to pop up, but this time their presence was being confirmed, this time by two military ground radar stations. Here's where things get really strange though. Two F-16 fighter jets were sent out to investigate what was going on, and this is when the pilots found that they couldn't see anything visually, but their radars were able to spot the target. While trying to keep track of these objects, the UFOs were just moving way too fast, and the pilots ended up losing track of them. In the end, there were about 13 and a half thousand people who witnessed this UFO incident, which has made it one of the most widely experienced UFO sightings of the modern era. The Belgian Air Force had no idea what it was that was witnessed, but they thankfully did acknowledge that some sort of unknown activity had taken place, instead of just trying to sweep it under the rug and pretend like nothing happened. In our number two spot today, we have the Cylinder UFO. This UFO sighting doesn't really come with a crazy story or anything, but the video truly does speak for itself. It's weird, and if I saw this on an afternoon with a perfectly clear sky, I would probably take my phone out and start recording as well. The video was taken in the summer of 2021 around noon one day by Reddit user I Broke the Box. The video shows them zooming in and out on some kind of object that is flying through the sky, but it's like like nothing I've ever seen before. I don't know if you've ever had like a bloater in your eye before, but at first it kind
kind of looks like that, like some weird cylinder just floating around. But the appearance changes slightly when it seems like maybe the sun is reflecting off of it. People in the replies have tried to speculate over what it could be that is in this video, but no one is entirely sure. So I have to ask, what do you think it is? In our number one spot today, we have Flight 1628. Back on November 17th, 1986, Japan Airlines cargo flight 1628 was flying from Paris to an airport near Tokyo when they had a very strange UFO encounter. On the part of the flight where they were over Alaska around 1711, the crew witnessed two unidentified objects to the left of their craft. The two objects rose up quite quickly to meet the craft and continued to fly alongside it. Each object had two rectangular things that are said to have appeared to be some sort of glowing nozzles or thrusters, but the crew on the plane couldn't see much else. They weren't able to see if there was anyone or anything inside. The closer these objects came to the plane, the more light was let inside, so much so that at the closest points, the plane's cabin was totally lit up, and the captain even said he could feel the heat from the lights on his face. After this, the two objects left, but this was not the end, because a third, much larger disc-shaped object showed up and started following the plane. In the end, the plane needed to make an emergency landing in Anchorage, Alaska, because this third craft was seriously large and incredibly frightening, and they just needed to figure out what was going on. The plane landed successfully and investigations were conducted, but to this day, no one is exactly sure what the men on board saw, but the entire crew witnessed the exact same thing. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I will see you again soon. Bye. Back, back in, <laughs> back on November 17th.